Hey, hey, what's happening, everybody? Thanks for joining us on Cinema Recap. Glad to have you here. Today, we're going to take a left turn and check out an episode of Black Mirror, Season 4, Episode 2, Archangel, released back in 2017. Thought it'd be cool if we smack a recap on this. This episode in particular centers around a woman who implants a microchip in her daughter's head in an effort to keep her safe. Spoilers ahead. Now the episode begins with a woman named Mary, given birth via a C-section. There's a slight complication just as the baby's born and she's suddenly terrified, certain that her child's dead. The nurses reassure her that everything's fine, giving her baby to hold, which Mary names Sarah. Now we don't know whether Mary's anxiety started with that split second during labor or if she was always a little paranoid, but as Sarah grows up, Mary watches her daughter like a hawk constantly worrying that something will happen to her little girl. Like when they walk to the park, the neighbor's dog barks at him, and the sound alone terrifies Mary. Sarah, on the other hand, is now three and curious about the world. She wants to pet the dog, but Mary's refusing. And when they get to the park, Sarah goes to play on the swings and jungle gym, with Mary locked on to her little girl. However, her concentration is interrupted by another mom, who asks her a quick question. Meanwhile, Sarah notices a cat and follows it away from the playground. When Mary turns away from the other mother, her worst fears are confirmed when her daughter's nowhere to be found. She immediately freaks out, fearing the worst, but a neighbor finds Sarah just a few seconds later. Sarah really wasn't missing for more than a minute, but the incident terrified Mary so much that she signs her daughter up for an experimental procedure. They go to a swanky clinic, all white walls and glass windows with a company name Archangel emblazoned on the wall in huge letters. Hey the company logo is a robotic eye, so you can probably guess by now what the procedure entails. A nurse leads Mary and Sarah past images of smiling children and to the operating room, all the while stressing that the experiment is perfectly safe and fully tested, which sounds more than a little suspicious to me, especially since the whole thing is completely free. Mm. Sarah sat down in front of an iPad playing cartoons to distract her from the procedure. The doctor takes a needle to the child's head and quickly injects something. It's over in seconds, completely painless. Sarah hasn't even noticed, transfixed on the iPad. So with the chip transplanted inside her head, the nurse teaches Mary how to use the parental hub, a tablet that's paired with the implant that's just been injected into Sarah's brain. It shows her exact location, her vitals, and even an optical feed meaning Mary has complete access to what her daughter sees. The nurse explains that the optical feed can be censored using parental controls. Basically, if Sarah sees something that causes her cortisol levels to rise, the implant can paint out whatever's triggering the hormone change. Mary doesn't understand what that actually means, so the nurse offers a demonstration. She switches the channel that Sarah's watching from cartoons to a war documentary which immediately causes a cortisol spike in Sarah, because it's scary and stressful. The implant, noticing the spike, turns on a filter, muffling what Sarah's seeing and hearing, so she can't truly perceive it. Well, Mary's not so sure that she wants to use that, but the nurse assures her that it's entirely optional. It's all optional. So later on, Mary tells her father about the Archangel implant inside Sarah, and he's scoffing at it, saying that she's being way too controlling. Back in his day, kids were roaming around everywhere outside, and they turned out just fine. Mary retorts that when she was a child, he let her outside and she came back home with a broken arm, mm -hmm. something that she doesn't want happening to Sarah. Well, her father just shrugs. After all, is Mary's arm still broken right now? Didn't think so. Okay then. Hey. The next day, Mary finds herself making frequent use of the very helpful Archangel device. She uses it to see Sarah's optical feed while they're playing hide and seek or to muffle the sound of the neighborhood dog on the walk to the park. The next day, Mary's called into work, where she's a physiotherapist. She leaves Sarah with her grandfather, but takes the parental hub with her to keep checking in. And while working on the computer, Mary gets a notification from the hub that the cortisol levels are spiking. She checks the optical feed and turns off the filter, revealing that Sarah's grandfather is having a heart attack. Mary rushes home to help. When they get back from the hospital, Mary's making sure that her father is comfortable after his ordeal, while Sarah runs to the kitchen to get a snack. Despite being in the living room, Mary can see on her hub what Sarah's up to and warns her hey, to only eat Sarah. one cookie. One cookie. After that, the Archangel is a mainstay in their life. 
Mary has a peace of mind, just like the nurse promised her because she can see what her daughter is up to at all times. Despite once assuring the nurse that she wouldn't use the optical filtering, Mary finds herself having switched it on more often than not. Like when her father dies and is buried, the filter blurs Sarah's vision of her mother's tears. Meanwhile, Sarah has learned to live with constant supervision. For example, while Mary's working on her computer upstairs, Sarah asks her opinion of an art piece that she's coloring downstairs. Through the parental hub, Mary can quickly check that optical feed and give her feedback. Now when the neighborhood dog barks, Sarah just walks past, oblivious to its presence. Kids bully her at school relentlessly about the chip implant. Calling her a walking snitch and chip head, she has to see a video that they're watching during recess. But a boy tells her that there's no point because the chip in her head would filter it out. Well, his name is Trick, and he tries to describe the violent video to her. But before long, Sarah's implant recognizes that he's saying dangerous things and blurs him out completely. She does, however, hear him call blood thick red it's juice. Like juice. Thick red juice. Not the most creative, but it's definitely effective imagery. Someone give this kid's English teacher a raise. Later that evening, Sarah colors a picture of a man with blood gushing out of him, just like the boy described to her. However, even her red-colored pencil scribbles get blurred by the filter. Maybe it's curiosity, maybe it's frustration, but Sarah takes a sharp pencil and uses it to prick her finger. Blood drips down, but it too gets blurred. Mary's working on her computer when she gets an alert on the parental hub that the cortisol is spiking. She opens the optical feed and races to her daughter's room. When she runs in, we find out Sarah's stabbing herself over and over again with that pencil. Mary snatches the pencil away and Sarah responds by slapping her across the face. Well, Mary takes Sarah to a psychologist. Watching the session from outside through the parent hub, the psychologist shows Sarah a drawing of two people fighting and asks her what they're doing. Sarah simply replies that they're just talking. After the session, Mary talks to the psychologist privately. She asks if he thinks Sarah has autism, but he responds that it doesn't really seem like that. We find out that the Archangel never launched past their trial stage. Instead, it was banned in Europe and operations will stop in America soon as well. The psychologist advises Mary to turn off the filter and get rid of the parental hub. Back at home, Mary does as the psychologist asked, turning off the hub and hiding it in the cabinet. She tells Sarah that the Archangel will no longer be online. And Sarah is scared. She hasn't been entirely alone since she was three years old. Mary comforts her, explaining that it'll be fine, and sends her off to school. This time, as Sarah's walking by the neighborhood dog, she can hear and see it completely. Well, it scares her, and she almost veers into the road. Back at home, Mary lasts for about a second before turning that Archangel back on just to check if she made it to school safely. Now at school, Trick gets into a fight and ends up cutting his lip open. For the first time, Sarah can see blood, and she tells him as much over recess. He's happy to know that the filter's turned off and proceeds to show her video after video of explicit content, from gore to nudity, a crash course of all she's missed out on over the years. Now more time's passing, and Mary puts away the hub for good in the attic. Sarah grows up into a relatively normal high schooler, now that her mom doesn't live in her brain all the time. She goes to school one day to find that Trick, now also grown up, got himself a car. Chilling in his new van, Trick invites Sarah and her friend Meryl to Lake Dalston to hang out after school. Lake Dalston later, if you Sarah coyly hang. replies that they'll think about it, and the two girls head home. On the walk, Sarah tries to get Meryl to take Trick up on his offer, but Meryl's replying that her dad would kill her if he found out. Sarah's insisting, and the girls decide to invent a lie about going to another friend's house for a movie night. Sarah tells her mom this when she gets home, and Mary believes it easily. So she heads out to the lake with Trick while Mary goes on a date with some guy. The teens end up having a bonfire smoking on the shore of Lake Dalston with Sarah and Trick snuggled up close. It's getting late, and Mary tries to call Sarah on the way home, but she's not answering. So she calls the mom of the friend that Sarah lied about having that movie night with. The mom, obviously, has no idea what she's talking about, and Mary slowly begins to realize she was duped. She calls every parent she knows, inquiring about her daughter, but no one knows where she is, and it's getting late. Mary gets home and runs to the attic for the parental hub, 
She plugs it in and checks the location, mystified when it shows that Sarah's on the edge of Lake Dalston, almost five miles away. She turns on the optical feed and is greeted by the sight of her daughter getting very, very intimate with Trick. When Sarah gets home, Mary doesn't confront her about the lake or Trick. Instead, she's disarmed by how easily her daughter lies to her. The next day, Sarah tells her mom that she'll be late coming home from school, citing a project she's working on with Meryl. But Mary is now suspicious, and for a good reason too, as after school, Sarah meets up with Trick again. So Sarah's drawing a design on her notebook and asks Trick to get it painted on his van. Trick, however, states that it's better for his van to be anonymous when he's out making deliveries. We find out that Trick delivers cocaine on the side, and Sarah begs to be allowed to just see it. Trick eventually gives in, but Sarah isn't satisfied with just looking at this white powder. She wants to try it. Back at home, Mary's parental unit rings, alerting her that Sarah's heart rate is spiking. Mary turns on the optical feed at the worst time, getting an eyeful of her daughter snorting a line of coke while Trick laughs in the background. Now Mary's furious, and well, eh, we can't really blame her. After all, it feels like a couple of minutes ago Sarah was an innocent three-year-old girl, and now she's dating a drug dealer. Mary runs a facial scan on the image the parental hub has taken of Trick and traces down his place of work, some furniture warehouse. She heads down to the store and unleashes motherly rage on Trick. Trick pulls the standard teenage move and denies her claims entirely. You want the cops in on this? But Mary shows him the proof on her phone. And Trick realizes that the Archangel system is still on inside Sarah. Mary threatens Trick to stay away from her daughter, or she'll show the cocaine video to the cops. And Trick ghosts Sarah entirely. No explanation, no excuses, just gone. And Sarah is devastated, unaware of her mother's involvement. She confronts Trick, but he just states that he wants nothing to do with her. Meanwhile, Mary's keeping constant watch on her trusty parental hub. She gets an alert one night and rushes out to the pharmacy. The next day, Mary crushes pills into Sarah's smoothie before school. Now in history class, Sarah's suddenly nauseous and races to the bathroom to hurl up the contents in her stomach. She ends up at the school's nurse, who runs tests on the vomit in case it's a norovirus outbreak. What she finds instead is the remains of an emergency contraceptive pill, which is what made Sarah so sick. The school nurse tells Sarah as much, but Sarah is flustered because she hadn't taken any contraceptive pill. Suddenly, all those facts start adding up. So when Sarah gets home, she raids the kitchen trash can and finds the packaging, further incriminating Mary. Sarah looks for that parental hub and finds it stashed in the cabinet. She turns it on and looks through the viewing history. Sure enough, her video with Trick is there. So realizing now what her mother's done, Sarah packs her bags and prepares to run away when she hears Mary's car pull up into the driveway. When Mary gets home, she finds a mess in the kitchen. She runs upstairs and checks on the parent hub. And when she turns on the optical feed, the screen just shows Mary's back. Mary turns around to find Sarah right behind her. Enraged and seething, Sarah confronts her mother about spying on her through Archangel. And Mary tries to explain that it was only for her protection. But Sarah doesn't care. She wrestles the hub out of her mom's hands, flicking through the switches to shut it down. Instead, she ends up turning the vision filter back on. Mary tries to snatch the hub back, but Sarah spins around and slaps her with it. The filter's blurring out the blood, so Sarah hits her mother again and again with the hub, unaware of the damage she's doing until the filter switches off to reveal her mother unconscious, face busted, and dripping blood. When Mary wakes up, her daughter's missing. The tablet's broken, she has no way of knowing where her daughter is. Mary runs out into the streets, screaming her daughter's name and pawing at the parent hub. But it's broken, and Sarah is long gone. And that was the end. Is a chip like Archangel's system an invasion of privacy? Or is it worth it for the protection and peace of mind it offers? Let us know what you think about it with the hashtag CinemaRecap. Till next time.